Hello, my name is Mrs. Tessa Rose Mahmoudi, and today we're going to talk about plant anatomy. Specifically, we're going to talk about vegetative plant organs and their function. We're going to cover leaves, stems, and buds. In this lesson, you will get a greater appreciation for plant genetic diversity. You'll also get help becoming more familiar with terms used by horticulturists. And this lesson will give you tools for better plant identification. Let's get started with leaves. Leaves are the solar panels of plants, acting as the main site of photosynthesis. This large area of the leaf is called the leaf blade. It's attached to the stem by something called a petiole. In this coleus, you can see the leaf blade attached by a stem, which is called the petiole, to the main stem. The main way that we differentiate leaves is by the leaf margin. The leaf margin is the outer edge of a leaf going all the way around. If we look at the shape of this margin, it can help us identify or notice differences in plants. For example, this jade plant has smooth leaf margins. This plant is called a Latania and it has light purple flowers. It has crenate leaf margins. This aloe plant has barbed leaf margins. These barbs can help protect the plant from being eaten by animals. Although leaves generally look pretty flat, there's important 3D structure inside leaves that are important for photosynthesis. Here's a sneak peek to the inside of a leaf. On the outer top is the cuticle, which is where the sunlight is absorbed. Inside here we have different cells that are doing different types of photosynthetic processes. At the bottom we have an opening which is called a stomata. On both sides of the stomata, there are guard cells, which open and close the stomata. This stomata will be opened and closed according to the environmental conditions at hand. The stomatal complex regulates the flow of water vapor in and out of the leaf. So let's get into more, some more leaf terms. This is a diagram of a leaf. Starting at the top, we have the leaf apex. Different leaves have different leaf apex shapes, so it's an important part to pay attention to. The whole area is called the leaf blade, but this vein, this main vein in here, is called the mid vein, and the others are also veins. Attaching the leaf to the stem is the petiole, and of course, on the underside of the leaf, we have stomata. Stomata are not that large, but for this graphical representations, they've been enlarged. Leaves come in all shapes and sizes, and even combinations. A compound leaf is composed of individual leaflets, but it will only have one bud at the base of the entire leaf. Compound leaves come in various configurations, such as palmate type, looking like the palm of your hand. Some leaves are needle-like. Leaves have leaf coverings, which can be anything like hair, scale, or film on the leaf blade. Almost all leaves have an invisible wax layer called the cuticle, which prevents water loss from the leaf surface. Stinging nettle plants, as shown here, have hairs called trichomes in addition to this cuticle layer. This hair gives extra insulation against water loss and discourages plant-eating animals by making leaves less easy to eat. Some plants also have stipules, which are leaf-like appendages found normally at the base of a petiole. Furthermore, some plants have other modified leaves to perform functions other than photosynthetic functions, such as climbing or defending. Stems are where leaves are attached, along with other important things like flowers and fruit. The way leaves attach to stems varies. For example, these leaves attach to the stem 
opposite to each other. One leaf is attached here, and then right opposite of it is another leaf. Think of this type as you're sitting across from somebody in a booth. Other plants have alternate leaf attachment. We have this leaf, and then up a little bit further, we have another leaf and another leaf. These are not opposite to each other, they are alternate to each other. The pattern of leaf arrangement is important for identifying different plant species. This area where the leaf is attached to the stem is a critical area called a node. The space between two nodes is an internode. This internode is important for the plant getting taller. Some plants, like spider plants, look like they have no stem at all. However, it's just that their inner nodes are very, very short. This is called a rosette form plant. This means that leaves radiate outward, overlapping each other just like petals of a rose. In the spider plant example, this overlapping, it's a little hard to see the organization of it. It's almost as if all these leaves are just coming from a single area. But in actuality, there is a stem, but the inch nodes are very, very short. Again, this is called a rosette form. Other example of rosette form plants are strawberries and African violets. Although we usually find stems above ground, not all stems are above ground. Some stems can even photosynthesize, such as an example of cactus plants. Inside the stems are important biological processes of the plant. There's important pipes within a stem called the plant vasculature. There's two main pipes. The water pipe in plants is called xylem, and it's used to transport water and nutrients from the roots up through the stem and out the leaves. Plants also need to be transporting sugar, which is what they produce in photosynthesis. Phloem is the plant's food transport system. Through photosynthesis, plants produce sugar in their leaves. This valuable product needs to be moved to other parts of the plant, so the phloem moves sugar up and down the plant. Buds. Buds contain immature plant parts. A vegetative bud is the site of a new leaf and stem growth. It contains a leaf or leaves and sometimes an embryonic shoot. This is an example of a terminal bud where this is an example of an axillary bud. A flower bud includes the makings of one or more flowers. Flower buds are frequently larger than vegetative buds. Flowers are critical for plant reproduction. We're going to cover flower anatomy next time. Thank you so much for listening. Feel free to email me with questions and comments, and please comment with suggestions for future videos. Make sure to subscribe. Have a great day. Thank you.